Welcome to section 1.5, Understanding oh. Governance Processes. Probably the most business-oriented or business management-related topic for the CISSP exam, or for anyone in security that's in a technical role, and even for those involved in governance processes in real life. I mean, it's, it's almost like you have to have an MBA to understand the risk management chapter fully. But luckily for this entry-level exam, you just need to know a few definitions and an overview of what they are and where they fall into place. Allow me to quickly define some key terms for this section. A policy is created by those in senior management by those who have the word chief or vice in their title. Policies are the highest level documents there are in an organization. They answer the question of what a company is doing, what it needs done, and how they're going to do it. This is an example of a high level policy created by, and most importantly, approved by someone in management. It might start out with a quick overview of the reason why this policy is being created. For this policy, this is just an example, it is centered around disaster recovery and it might state something like this. <clears throat> In an effort to recover our business functions from potential disaster, it is important for our organization to have contingency plans in place to maintain our competitive advantage. Management has approved financial, operational, and technical support should our services stop functioning in an event classified as a disaster. Okay. And in a policy document, there might also be a section called Purpose that states, Moving forward, the company will begin the creation of business continuity and disaster recovery planning that will document the proper processes to cover information technology systems, data, applications, or services from a major outage. Okay, so far so good? As you notice, a policy doesn't mention anything specific. It's all high level. Basically, management is saying to everyone in the operations team, we want this, so get it done however you can without costing us a whole bunch. Okay, and in the same document, you can have something called a scope that states, this policy is a direct instruction for the information technology staff to develop, test, and maintain a BCP DRP plan. What this scope is saying has a hidden meaning. Management is explicitly saying that the IT department, which includes security, will be responsible to create a BCP DRP plan. They will be the one to initiate it. But what it implicitly states is that the IT department will be held accountable as well. Meaning, if anything goes wrong with the BCP DRP or its recovery process, we're blaming the IT department manager or whatever C-level manager is responsible, like the chief information security officer or the chief technology officer or any one of those. They're going to be responsible if something goes wrong with the BCP DRP. That's being explicitly stated in the policy document. They're not going to blame a low-level network security engineer like me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not responsible for decisions like that. I just follow orders. Then you have the actual policy in place meaning a list or paragraph of all that must be done to stay in line with this policy, in line with what this policy is about. Examples of this include statements like, the organization requires an outage response plan, a customer relations management plan, device failure return merchandise authorization process plan, data restoration plan, or a system recovery plan. And if this were my CSP exam, of course, I'd go into, uh, I'm sorry, if this was my CSP exam course, I'd go into detail of all those things. But luckily for this entry level exam, you don't have to know any of those. But what you ha do have to know is that these are examples of high level policy statements. Notice they didn't specifically mention anything about how to protect the systems how to recover the systems, how to manage customer relations, or who specifically is responsible for each. That all happens in the documents that work to uphold a policy, which are procedures, standards, baselines, laws, and regulations documents that we will learn about next. This policy, in our books and study guides, may state that it is created by senior management, but in reality, it is just approved by them. 
I, I mean, on the on an exam, if they ask who creates policy documents, you, and if one of the choices is senior management, that's probably the correct answer. You know, like the, the CEO isn't sitting at his desk tying up this policy with his like corn. You know, he's not he's not sitting at his desk with a typewriter typing up this policy with his corn cob pipe or something. Uh, someone like maybe the CISO or a director or someone who really knows their organizations at a at both a high and low level, they're the ones that's going to really write it. Someone with excellent written and verbal skills. That's why you see that requirement on some job postings where it says, must have excellent written and verbal skills. You got to know how to write this kind of stuff. This kind of official stuff that will be viewed by high-ranking executives. Even if you're on the low-level engineer side or, or a project manager or an analyst or auditing, you got to learn how to read and write properly. Not just read and write, but very well and properly. You don't want to look like you learn how to read and write from, like, you know, the Twitter's, Twitter's comment section. you got to be a professional. <laughs> you got to know the difference between your and your, and especially the difference between their and their. Making grammar mistakes like that at work while nobody may say anything about it, it's not a good look, no matter how much you want to deny it. Step up your grammar, and you will be introduced to a whole new circle of people in life. Rich people. Knowledgeable people. People you can learn from. Stop hanging out with people with zero ambition, okay? They'll just pull you down and keep you distracted. You have focus. You have goals. You want generational wealth to the point you want your great-grandchildren to be born wealthy. Trust funds. Inheriting, like, multi-million dollar stock options that you started now because you got an awesome security job that allowed you to save some money and invest. Right? Save your money. Don't go buy the latest iPhone all the time or, or, or like, a, the newest pair of shoes, whatever they are, newest pair of Yeezys, or whatever they are. Or spend like $100 at the bar every weekend, which I actually did last weekend. But, you know, I'm already in this game. I, I, can, I can do that. You know, all that, all, all that is over. You're done with all that. You're studying for security exams now. You have a different life to accomplish. You're in a higher echelon now. Okay, this is the first step in the governance process to issue a policy. There must be a policy for everything in the company. Otherwise, it doesn't happen in the company. Simple as that. Anything we do in the company, any actions, any new technology, hiring anybody, firing anybody, we do all this because there is a policy for it. If there isn't a policy, then management needs to create one to address it. Just like when the GDPR came out, or just like when COVID happened, companies started creating these new policies to address the concern of private data, you know, for GDPR as it aligns with EU customers, or for when COVID happened, what the new work from home rules are during the pandemic. Okay, those are policies set by management. Let's take a look at standards. Standards are a way for keeping things the same in a company. All employees will use Windows laptops and workstations is setting a standard. All video conferencing software will be done through Zoom is setting a standard. All firewalls will be checkpoint firewalls is setting a standard. Uh, what else? Um, designating using only the company LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook account to release press releases about the company during a disaster or otherwise is a standard. And who writes these standards? Once again, is it the CEO? Maybe the assistant to the chief information security officer? Or maybe just a line director or, or a team lead? It's someone who has intimate knowledge of the company just like the person who writes the policy. But the important thing to remember is that no matter who writes it, we can be sure of who approves it. Someone in senior management. Senior management will always need to approve all governance processes and actions within the organization, no matter what it is. And uh, the funny thing is, somehow, they are also the ones to approve their own pay raises and bonuses. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. Somehow they never seem to disagree or not approve their own pay raises or, or stock options. <laughs> funny how that works out. The, uh, the most important thing to learn about standards as it relates to this exam is just one thing. 
they always work to uphold the policy. Like, uh, like, hey, think about this. Why do we want everything to be the same? Why do we want all Windows computers and not like an assortment of Linux or MacBook Pros or Chromebooks or whatever the employees feel comfortable with? It's because of our policy at the beginning. Just think of our BCP DRP policy that we stated. Because during a disaster, what do you think is going to be easier to recover and manage? A company that has all the same devices and images and operating systems that all have the same requirements and that all match the same type of assets and resources in our inventory? Or a company with multiple different computers and systems, each of which require a specific process custom to each user? It's the first one. During a disaster, if all Windows workstations become corrupted, there would be a repository of backup images ready to go for all the, all the Windows systems. No one, the systems administrator or the recovery team, they're not frantically looking for Linux distros or using the Apple restoration software to restore just one crucial MacBook Pro in the company and devoting resources to that when there are more critical things to do. The key thing to take away about learning about standards is that a standards document makes it so everything is the same in the company and that there's a unified direction on what those things should be. And, and secondly, standards aren't just created out of thin air. They are there for a reason. They are there to uphold the requirements outlined in the higher level of policy. It's a, it's a top-down approach. Everything we have learned about for standards and everything we are going to learn about in this video, the second after I finish this sentence, is all to upload and adhere to the initial policy set forth by senior management. Let's look at the next thing in the governance process, procedures.